Good evening, my friends. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my beautiful rideshare revolutionaries. And uh, today I'm going to be doing my second part of my little series for why driving for Uber and Lyft is a losing game if you don't play it correctly. Okay. So, um, hi, Lila. Lila, say hi. Uh, yeah. So I've had today was a very lazy day. I did not drive because of uh, birthday and because of the strike and things like that. So, um, I want to go over another thing that I've I've heard so many times in the time I spent driving and the time that I've been you know operating this managing this YouTube channel is a lot of a lot of things I've heard from drivers and one of the big issues I I think drivers are repeatedly running into and that's going to be like financial responsibilities and used cars and bad credit okay so uh, first I want to mention, maybe I didn't make this clear in the last video, even though I, I've mentioned this hundreds of times. I did mention in the last video, I made $85,000 driving last year. I, there was screenshots that were supposed to be shown right here. They didn't make it on screen. So hopefully they make it this time around where I did in fact make $85,000 driving. That was before expenses. In any business, there are expenses. Rideshare is no different. So last year, I did, in fact, make $85,000 a year driving. This year, I might make a bit more. Um, but after expense, my expenses are usually per week 25 to 30%. Um, and I'm sorry. you know, I'm going I'm to get away from the table because I'm making it shake a bit too much. Okay. So my expenses are usually 25 to 30% of my total earnings. So that's my expenses include fuel, maintenance, insurance, car payment, uh, cell phone bill, car washes. That's the expenses you're going to have as a ride your driver if you do not rent a car. If you own or finance a car, those are the expenses you're going to have to deal with every single week, every single month for the amount of time you're doing this. You will not be able to get away with those unless you rent a car. Okay, so after expenses for last year, 10% would be what, 8,500? 8,500 times two, uh, times three would be 25,000 something. So 25,500 maybe. So my take home was about $60,000 last year from driving. Um, I didn't include taxes really because that's one thing where I have to differ from my viewers is I have a YouTube channel. I make referral revenue. So whatever I make from referral money, or my YouTube revenue, I set that money aside and I put that for tax. That's my tax burden, especially this year since the channel is growing and I'm getting more ad revenue. Most of the YouTube revenue I collect this year goes right to a savings account and that's my tax money. I got nothing to worry about when Uncle Sam holds his hand out. Okay, so get that out of the way. Now, I want to talk about what is your financial goal? How much do you want to make? How much do you plan on making? Are you willing to set aside enough time to hit that goal? Okay. And, and also you have to also be aware of, is it possible to hit that goal? And I, and this is where I, I, unfortunately I cannot help you guys that drive in smaller markets. If the most you can make is $150 on a Friday night, then that's, that's a challenge from you got to deal with. This is more for, the power drivers, the full timers, the ones that want to get into this and do it right from the beginning, and do it well. Um, so if you drive in a market where there is very high capacity for earnings, like Chicago, Boston, New York, Philly, San Francisco, uh, LA, San Diego, the bigger markets, how much are you willing to drive? How much do you want to make and how much are you willing to drive to make that money? If you want to make $1,200 a week, then, you know, I actually did, did I took some screenshots and calculator earlier, uh, $1,200 per week is for 50 weeks. So if you want to take two weeks off for vacation, uh, that's $60,000 per year before expenses. If you want to make $1,500 per week for 50 weeks a year, that's $75,000 before expenses. If your expenses are anywhere from 25 to 30%. Now, like me, I try to make $1,750 per week. So that means I stand to make 
$87,500 before expenses. Before, not after, before expenses. After expenses, that could be, that's about the same amount as last year, 60, but a little bit over $60,000 take home. But that beats the crap out of the $38,000 take home I was making and my previous sales job that required me to work 55, 60 hours a week anyway. Now, if you want to get into this and you'll be a full-time driver, you have to be aware the money's not going to fall in your lap. And how much do you want to make? You have to really consider that before getting into this. Because if you think that you're just going to turn your app on at nine in the morning and you're going to drive till seven at night and you're going to make 300 bucks, you got another thing coming to you because it's not happening. Um, you, are you willing to wake up early? Are you, are you willing to wake up when traffic is, is heavy, when business is heavy, when demand is heavy? If you want to sleep in, this is not the game for you. You're going to lose. If you want to be lazy, this is not the game for you. You're going to lose. If you're willing to work hard, you're willing to master your market, perfect your own strategy, and you're driving in a market where the earnings are possible, you're going to you're going to do better than the rest. You're going to do significant you're going to make significantly more money than those out there who just are just driving aimlessly and they're waking up late and all that stuff. So it's something to consider. How much do you want to make and how hard are you willing to work for it? And yes, I know I'm aware of the fact that every, you cannot make that much money in every market around the country. I've covered that before. I'll have to say it again because there's always going to be one dickhead going, oh, I drive in uh, St. Petersburg. It's not possible. I know. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, moving on. Another thing I've heard repeatedly from drivers is that they, they want to get into this, but their credit sucks. They say, Geo, I got really bad credit. I want to get a newer car because I drive like, I drive an 08 Mitsubishi Galant and it's not going to hold up. So I'm going to get a newer car, but my credit sucks. You know, what should I do if my credit sucks? And then sometimes they'll say, but but I got approved for a new car. Should I drive a new car to do this? I'm like, no, 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 do not do that. Um, which doesn't make much sense to me. I'm not really... I'm not really in the know financially, but I, I don't quite understand why you wouldn't get approved for a used loan, but a new loan. Yeah, here you go. Have fun. Because um, I personally think unless you drive in a great market where you can make tons of money, hand over fist all the time, uh, it's just not in your best interest to get a new car to do this. I really do not believe that. But another thing uh, I want to say, too, is like the reason... You can drive a brand new car to do Uber and Lyft. You really can. And Uber and Lyft will not stop you from driving a brand new car. If you if you somehow came in possession of a 2018 Rolls Royce Phantom and you were doing Uber X rides, Uber and Lyft would not stop you from doing that. They would not send an email saying, "Are you sure you want to you want to roll that three hundred thousand dollar machine around to pick up people for seventy cents a mile, sixty cents a mile?" You're not going to get that email. They don't care. They don't care that you made an unwise decision to make them money. They do not care. And that aspect, it's a little unfair, yeah, but you have to be the one to take control of your finances and you have to be responsible and you have to be practical. You have to be or you're going to lose. You're going to play this game and you're going to lose. Okay, now back to the issues of the used cars. Okay, we're gonna. I'm going to go into a little story from a couple years ago. I, I got a ride to a pool party on the second weekend of July. I was picked up by, by, by a driver and it was the, he was driving like a 27, brand new Chevy Sonic, brand new. This thing had 3000 miles on it. And I asked him, how recently did you get this thing? He said, he just got it last week. Uh, he got it through like the Uber finance thing and his loan was something like, and I might be a little wrong on the numbers here, but it was something like $16,000 you know, and he had a horrible credit score. So his interest rate was like 16% or something like that. So he said the loan was like $25,000 or something like that. And I'm like, dude, you got to pay this thing off quicker than that. He's like, yeah, I know, but I got, I got rent to pay and all this. And honestly, I think that poor guy, if he's still driving, I mean, I'll show you guys. I got the numbers over here uh, for you guys to see. That guy has not even be if he's been making the minimum payments on that car, he has not even put a dent 
into the principal balance on that loan yet. He's just been paying off the interest. And that's why I think if you are willing to work hard, if you want to get into this and you were willing to work hard and you want to get ahead financially, the best way to play this game is to get a used car, preferably something from like 2013 to 2016, used Honda Accord, used Toyota Camry, used uh, Toyota Prius, used Toyota Corolla, something good, practical, econom economical that is going to be comfortable for you and your passengers, is going to be uh, fuel efficient, and something that's not going to completely skin you alive when it comes to repairs and maintenance and all that stuff like that. Um, and your your goal should be to find something between it might you don't want anything too old because then it might start falling apart. That's my opinion. Fight me on it. Um, that's why I think you need to, you should try to find something newer but not new, and something midsize import. Around, you know that's that's my opinion. Again, you could do do whatever you want. Uh, I would research cars that aren't like known for reliability. Like Chrysler 200s aren't known for reliability. Chevy Cruises aren't known for reliability. Um, Nissan Sentras and Altimas, they have still CVT transmissions that are falling apart at 80,000 miles. Uh, you got to think smart and practical, economical, all these things. Those are the choices you have to consider when you want to buy a new car, when you get want to get a car for ride share. Okay. And you should look at the loan amount. Because some of these cars, let's say, let's say the loan is fifteen five, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000. If you are willing to work hard, let's say, like, remember I showed up, I showed what you could potentially make in a year if you make twelve hundred a week, fifteen a week, seventeen fifty a week. If you're willing to set aside a chunk of your earnings, earnings, earnings to pay off that loan, you could pay off your car loan in 10 months to a year. And since you're driving a, a car that's reliable and fuel efficient, everything like that, you could just... Your, your your expenses are now slashed and you can continue to collect money for two or three years over the life of that car. Because like I said in my previous video, if you're a full-time driver, you're going to be driving 50,000 miles a year. You're not going to get away with driving less than that, unfortunately. Um, that's why you have, you have to consider all these things, guys. If you're going to get into this game, if you're going to play this game and you want to play to win, you also have to be realistic in your approach. You have to realize that the car is an absolute necessity. You need the car unless you're planning a rent. You need the car and you need a good car, but you also have to get out from that loan as quick as you can. The quicker you pay off that car, the quicker you can do better things with that money. You got nothing to worry about because you don't have a car payment. It's, car, it's paid off and now you just have to worry about fuel and maintenance. And like I said, my car and maintenance, part of my expenses is per month. Um, I think it's like 550. So for me, my expense, if I pay off my car soon, which it will be, it will be $800, about 800 a month in fuel, 550 in maintenance. Um, insurance is 140 cell phone, 140, um, car washes, all that stuff. So without the car payment, my, 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 uh, my biggest expense is fuel and my total expenses are down back under like 1500 bucks. So after my car's paid off, I get to pocket that much more money each month and put that towards the other things I want to do. Right. So I think that that's, in my opinion, the correct way to play this game. Uh, some of you are going to disagree completely, but that's fine. And we are talking about economy cars here, guys. We're not talking about uh, the higher platforms. I have other videos I'm going to get to on that. So that's all I got for this one. I want to thank y'all for watching. Uh, everyone, please stay safe, stay driven, stay classy, and I'll talk to you next time. And uh, thanks again, guys. Bye.